Welcome, everyone. Excited to have Neeraj here today. Uh, Neeraj, it's a pleasure to have you here today, and I've known you for quite some time. I had an opportunity to work with you as well. Uh, really exciting to, to see you here uh, talking about automation orchestration with us today. Thanks, Shell. Thanks for inviting me. Really, really uh, looking forward to our conversation today. Neeraj, can you take a, a, a moment and introduce yourself to our audience? Sure, absolutely. Uh, uh, this is Neeraj Mathur, Director of Intelligent Automation at VMware. I'm re responsible for basically everything intelligent automation related, bringing the full scale uh, intelligent automation practice uh, within VMware at this point. So that's why this particular conversation is, is very close to my heart. Well, great. Let's get right into it, Neeraj. Uh, what, let's start with a, a simple um, explanation of what is an orchestrator? What does it really do from your perspective? I would say in a simple terms, it's essentially means of one place where we need a way to really manage and control the whole intelligent uh, automation ecosystem. But when we go into more what exactly the manage and control means, it means very different thing to different roles uh, from you know business and operation and, and COE leaders and all. So there are multiple aspects which we need to really cover, which we can talk about in detail. But uh, it essentially means management and control of the whole uh, ecosystem. Great. I recently wrote a paper on that. I don't know if you had an opportunity to look at it. Yes, I did. I did. It was really great to read, uh, Shell, on that. And in fact, I, I really enjoyed uh, reading about the shortcomings of Orchestrator, which you mentioned over there as well. So how did you really get to write that? What What was really your thought and driver behind that? Look, I think, uh, you know, RPA tools have evolved from simple bots that automate, you know, single micro tasks or, uh, or, or activities to, to a more complex end to end uh, unattended automation um, that can automate the entire processes and, and deliver, you know, unprecedented benefits. However, you know, I've often said this automation management is the automation that automation companies forgot. And, um, at the heart of RPA is is the orchestrator, and while orchestrators have improved, and you know some of have, them have moved to become cloud based, uh, several have not rearchitected, and as a result, you know there is a design debt built over the uh, over the years with a focus on selling bots versus managing them, and that design debt has limited orchestrators to you know, basic operational uh, bot metrics. So there are cost barriers. There are some orchestrators that don't necessarily monitor all the incidents or provide a, a holistic view of incidents. Uh, you know, many customers are looking for a self-recovery, self-healing capability. Uh, and sometimes they want the orchestrator to simply restart. Uh, and that's not happening in some of the orchestrators. You know, organizations uh, have to build a uh, customized inventory management system for the orchestrator, which can be an arduous and, and a very resource uh, intensive effort. So that's what really led me to write about this because I was seeing that there, there wasn't much written about orchestration at all. Uh, there's a lot of write-ups around bots. And I was seeing this emergence and um, an ongoing emergence of automation optimization as a category that brings together these end-to-end -end automation orchestration and management capabilities you know, basically to cut cost, increase performance, measure business impact. And many COEs are starting to pay attention to these and, and they're starting to adopt these solutions. Right. And and as you know, Neeraj, I mean, there are multiple COE operating models out there. You know, a lot of about has been written about them too. Yeah. Um, but what, what are these models from your perspective and, and do the current orchestrators provide, you know, the ability to work across these different models? Yeah, no, over the period of time, you're right, uh, Shell, this has grown quite rapidly and, and in different ways. Like from an operating model point of view, the commonly which we see in industry, you know, some organizations goes with a centralized COE model. There is a federated model, which is also commonly used in, 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 in many places. And then the, the hybrid of the two uh, as well is becoming quite commonplace too. Uh, but the, the focus which we see right now from various vendors, uh, those who are building uh, these products, uh, it is in pockets actually, it is providing the features, uh, but to really support uh, what you need from these different, what you need for these different models to operate, uh, there are a lot of lack uh, lacking um, features, let me say, 
in that way, right? So le let's take a few examples. One good example would be if you're looking at it from a centralized COE point of view, then uh, the operations or anyone who is doing the support of that infrastructure and, and all the bots would require a holistic view across various business units and business functions because you know they are centralized, mm -hmm. right? But the core nature of the orchestration many times is isolation at a business function level, yeah. right? Uh, which works very well for federated model, right? Uh, so if you are going really building the orchestrator uh, orchestration from that point of view, then you're really aligning to the need of business users or aligning the need of the federated model but really lacking on the centralized aspect of it, right? So, so I think we need some way to really um, manage these different models uh, through the orchestration as well, uh, so that you know all, all all these different capabilities are actually supported as well as uh, you know different personas can really use them. Yeah. So, and, and one other thing actually, Shell, on this point, uh, which comes to my mind as well, is that. Like over the period of time, you you, you also see that um, as the organization scale, uh, the 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 everything is data here, right? So um, whether we are automating the process or we are really dealing with uh, uh, the setup of any of these bots, everything behind the scene is the data, which really grows over the period of time, quarter over quarter, uh, and then these orchestrations has to be really done in a way, in an efficient way. So that these cap data, which is out there, can be utilized in much more meaningful manner as well. Completely agree with you, Neeraj. But doesn't that make the orchestrator a single point of failure? Would you would you agree with that? Yeah, it actually. I mean, we are talking about, as you've said in the beginning, it's a heart of the whole ecosystem, right? So it's clearly it is a single place where you know the whole control and management happens. Uh, so inherently, by that definition and the nature, the role it plays. Uh, it does become a single point of failure, especially on the design where you know the the bots are supposed to run by having a connectivity with the orchestrations, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> so in in that nature, you are essentially making sure that you know the the orchestration piece of your architecture should be up and running every time for the bots to really operate as well, uh, and 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 that's why. We also say that the, the business continuity plan, the disaster recovery plan has to be thought through very well to really avoid these kind of single point of failure or if the, when the failure happens, how you really quickly and swiftly uh, react to that as well. All those uh, plans and policies should be in place as well and well tested too. Yeah, I mean, I think it's very interesting because this is where technologies like that or capabilities like automation management that infuse uh, AI capabilities to uh, predict errors that can happen uh, with, within your automation journey becomes uh, critically important as well. So if I draw a comparison of automation to other technologies, you know, take network or cloud optimization uh, you know, we saw the optimization of the network. Cloud environments came, you know, much later on after the wave of, the, of cloud deployments. And even today, some are questioning whether they're fully optimized in the cloud, as an example. Yeah. Um, a, a lot has to do with, um, you know, I would say expectation setting, mapping, measuring. What are, what are your thoughts about that as it relates to automation? You know, are KPIs mapped across the entire life cycle of the automation journey? Uh, should they be? Yeah, no, it's certainly a journey. I mean, we are talking about the, the orchestration for quite some time and, and it has obviously evolved over the period of time, like not just like back in the days, it was really just a place to deploy your bots, right? Uh, and But now, you know, there is a quite a sophisticated capability, capabilities available to really capture the KPIs, share those, you know, reports uh, and one centralized place as well. So I agree, it's a, it's a journey. Clearly, um, uh, that said, I think the, the other other important aspect to look at, in my view, is also a lot of actuals of your business process now happens through the orchestration process of the RPA and intelligent automation platforms, right? So whether uh, any critical business process which is triggered. Uh, through the orchestration to the, the pipeline of data which goes through the bots and the orchestration 
uh, th that actually is the place where it gives you the the real actual values of your transaction like how many number of transactions are you doing on a monthly basis you know what's your success rate and error rates are on those transaction what's the growth of your volume is um, uh, yeah the underlying business application or or uh, the the record system would have that too but that will have actually across like human and bots or multiple bots as well uh, but if you're looking at it from an automation point of view, the data really sits in somewhere in this ecosystem behind the orchestration. Uh, and so that's why the, the way to really measure the KPIs and compare them between uh, what was projected at the time when the project was kicked off versus what's really the actuals uh, really sits in the orchestration, right? So, so all these things needs to be looked at from that point of view so that we can start really capturing those the data points as well. So I agree that the whole journey is there, data is there, but we need to really start uh, using that in a, in a much more uh, meaningful way. Neeraj, I, I, I'm not so sure if the uh, data as it relates to the digital footprint, uh, which is the idea itself that led to the automation and creation of a business case around the automation sits in the orchestrator. I think it yeah, sits in a different system today. It sits in various yeah. different systems. It could be in SharePoint, it could be in Excel. Uh, and that's just the intake portion of a of yeah. a journey, right? And then you get to the management of the journey, which is the whole orchestration piece itself. And you know, the dynamic scheduling and the cross-queuing of the bots and the error prediction capabilities and so on. And then following that in the life cycle is the whole measurement itself, which is tied back to the intake and the digital footprint. So across that chain, across that uh, life cycle, um, the orchestrator, in my opinion, I'm interested in yours, is not necessarily integrated across all of those capabilities. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Would you agree with that? And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be integrated essentially. Uh, in my view, uh, Shell, but I think what, what I was really trying to get to is, is that uh, we need some way of like, so, so taking this example, when we start any automation project, we look at a small opportunity there, which might be a hey, hundred thousand transactions over a quarter, which will save me maybe thousand hours, right? Uh, but then over the multiple quarters, that hundred thousand could have become a million, right? Sure. <clears throat> now, how do we know that? How do we see that there is a value on it that need that is only available in orchestrations uh, uh, arena, right. but uh, would it re require a full integration from the intake point of view? No, but if it has an integration or some way of capturing those original projected numbers and then see the actuals over the you know quarter by quarter basis, there's an immense value on seeing having that sort of visibility for business. Yeah, yeah, and I think dude, that's that's where I was going. Is that you know from from what we have described and we have talked about the orchestrator itself, that's one component of the entire life cycle. And yeah. there is what I'm hearing you say is that there is a holistic, uh, there's a need for a holistic view across the life cycle of multiple yeah. automation technologies and potentially multiple vendors as well. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. So I think, uh, and this connects to your point about the cloud deployment as well, that it's a journey that, uh, you know, uh, the, the whole ecosystem really evolved by individual vendors building their own ways of controlling orchestration management and all that. But if you really see the growth in last, particularly in last two, three years in the industry, a lot of different components of intelligent automation technologies from chatbots, the machine learning models, the intelligent document processing, the unstructured data driven which work which is done, the advanced analytics work which is done, all integrates with at the end of the day with intelligent bots, right? And uh, so, so there is a really uh, a, a, a important need at this point of time to have that sort of a holistic view uh, you can go to individual products and their dashboards or, or portals to really see what is happening in that specific platform. But that really gives you a quite a disparate view and, and still a lot of work needs to be done to connect them together. Uh, so, so certainly there is one layer up, a holistic view is required to know, hey, if I'm doing a business process where 
my bot goes and capture data from one system uh, and then go into another system where the you know document processing is done and take that data and and pass it on to some chatbot how do i really see that transition happening from one point point a to point b to point c uh, we need that sort of a visibility as well and that will open up a lot more opportunities in terms of you know where where the more automations can be done too no i couldn't agree more with you i think uh, you know in in the uh um uh, at the, at the risk of coining another phrase uh and there are so many of them in automation as you know today you know i think automation is an ecosystem and the coe needs to transform from center of excellence to the center of the ecosystem itself right okay. so in that context uh, uh niraj what is the one thing that you want to leave behind uh with our audience today yeah i think i really enjoyed this conversation and 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 one thing which comes to my mind uh the whole purpose of the automation journey is to really bring in efficiency for our business uh, that's the end goal we bring in whether we do think it from an optimization point of view automation point of view hours saved uh, compliance error reduction some way of efficiencies which we are bringing in but we should not lose the side of uh, not having efficiencies in the coe itself mm -hmm. right and that's where the orchestration really brings a become a very critical component because again being a heart of the whole process and within the coe uh, it really is the place where the efficiency within the coe uh, process as well so that we can deliver back the the business value uh, back to business in a rapid manner uh, i think the orchestration is really the place so the message i really have one message is to have the focus on uh, keeping the efficiencies within the coe process too It's a great message Neeraj always a pleasure talking to you I really appreciate you taking the time and uh looking forward to seeing you before the holidays Thank you no thanks for having me Michelle really appreciate that Take care